community as well, or being really supportive over Big John as well. Um, this this game is not based on the movie, uh, The Room, but uh, it's a wacky one as well. But yeah, I'll go start off with the run right now. So yeah, time will start in three, two, one, go. All right, so. What the room basically is, is that you are playing as, um, Henry Townshend. And, and Henry Townshend actually comes in, came into this apartment, uh, wanting to come for another life, or, like, he wants to live another life. But, uh, strange things start to happen, and then, yeah, the apartment starts to lock itself. Um, uh, this is also, like, uh, what I mentioned, the first game that actually, uh, introduces first person. <laughs> Um, first person, for some reason, strafing is actually faster, so I have to do a lot of, st a lot of strafing, um, in first person. I'm gonna take this chocolate milk, because chocolate milk is actually really that good. Do you guys like chocolate milk? Mmm, chocolate milk. Alright, I'm gonna look at, look out this window, and then we're gonna see a beautiful lady outside. Uh, that lady is, if I'm not mistaken, Cynthia. So, Cynthia... Is gonna go into the subway and also later on we're gonna meet her uh, meet her but at the same time um, you find out that you get locked inside of your apartment uh, there are locks like inside the, the apartments and you can't even go outside at all look at her sh strolling downstairs or strolling down towards the uh, the, the subway and then oh what's that sound Oh, so by the way, it's currently like 5.30 in the morning over here. Uh, if you guys do not know, I live in Singapore, so... <laughs> I'm playing this game at the spooky hours of like midnight, 5.30 a.m. Alright, we're gonna look at this hole. There's a spooky little hole right here. Not even little. It's quite big enough for um, Henry to actually fit into the hole and crawl into the hole. Uh, basically, in this game, uh, the way of how you're actually gonna get out uh, of the apartment is that... You go through this hole. You go in of the hole and out of the hole. It's a weird game, but that's how it is. But yeah, we are gonna go all the way into uh, the other side of the hole and we're gonna meet Cynthia. There are a few things in this game as well. Uh, this is also Henry Townshend. Uh, this is the guy who also says um, the, the the best lines in this game, such as What the hell? In a monotonous voice, it's What the hell? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Alright, so we also meet Cynthia. Cynthia is one of our uh, uh, escorts, I guess. We need to escort uh, Cynthia to get out of the subway. Uh, basically, how Cynthia was uh, in here is that Cynthia got into a dream state, if I'm not mistaken, and then she just got dragged into the subway with Henry. And then she's like, oh, if you could get me out, I could uh, give you a favor. But like, uh, you would never know. <laughs> you would never know how uh, it will happen. Because later on, you will find out that she would uh, do something very crazy. All right, we're gonna take this pistol. We have to look at that hole. That hole, uh, if you actually look at be uh, at the other side of the hole, is actually our neighbor. But uh, I'll talk about the neighbor later. This is Cynthia. Now Cynthia is actually uh, how you say, uh, calling us right now. I forgot to mention that Cynthia actually went to the bathroom as well because she had a tummy ache, and then we went to the female's bathroom because we wanted to check on her. Now we actually gonna check on her again. And she's frozen. <laughs> she she has become into stone. But we get her coins anyways. So, yeah. Alright. So, um, from now on, there's going to be a lot of routing. And also, at the same time, this game is a lot of... There's a lot of RNG in this game. Um, later on, there's going to be a, like an escort mission that you have to do. Um, this is also one of those games where it has item inventory. Uh, normally in a Silent Hill game, there's not really a lot of item inventory as well, so this is just, I think, the first game that has item inventory. Also, we can see Cynthia that's in in this um, subway, or in this train. But yeah, um, 
There's item inventory then, and also there's like an escort mission for uh, the second half of the game. All right, we are gonna unlock the doors just to get Cynthia out. Hello, Cynthia. And there's also like some kind of ghosts. I call them the Sims ghosts. A lot of people will say that those are floating zombies. I say no, that's not a floating zombie. Is that another hype train? I do not know if there's another hype train, honestly. Or if this is a hype train. It's a really dull hype train. <laughs> this is a really dull hype, hype train where we just go train after train after train. Alright, I need to go here right now. Alright. This is a maze. Almost on the other side as well. There you go. We're gonna go out of it. No, no Sims ghosts. Oh yeah, people have been telling me that those are like floating monsters. They they are not floating, uh, floating zombies. They're not floating zombies. They are um, they are floating ghosts. All right, so Cynthia over here doesn't really follow you anymore, and uh, she gets dragged into somewhere. If I'm not mistaken, I don't know where. But it's like inside a um, place that we need to go to later on. But yeah. Alright, coming up is a really RNG heavy, um, <laughs> really RNG heavy area. Which I personally call the uh, the escalators, the, the RNG escalators, or you can call it like any other escalators that could whack you. And torture you and this dog is just this dog is not really cooperating with me that's cool all right we are gonna go up to the escalators right now and the escalators there are monsters that's coming out of the wall trying to hit you so I need to concentrate on this one right now there you go so we need to dodge all these uh, hits right now if you don't dodge all these hits you get this weird slap and it could push you down all the way down or push you a little bit high up uh, but most of the time it's just all the way down oh no all right Oop. I think we are very close to the end there we go all right so now we're gonna check up on Cynthia because Cynthia was in uh, a room this thing. Alright, and then we find out that Cynthia is dead. Alright, so <laughs> Cynthia is dead. And she had a carving on her back, if I'm not mistaken. It's called 15121. You will find out what the meaning of 15121 is um, when we progress into the game. But right now, we are in the forest. Um, you go into another realm or another world in this um, in this game, so... It give uh it, it teleports you into other worlds once um a victim actually dies. Right now we are gonna meet um Jasper if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Jasper, and he's a, a quirky guy. He stutters a lot uh, in this game. But yeah, we're gonna hear the stutterings really soon, and also we're gonna give him the chocolate milk sooner or later. Um, it's really uh. Weird to actually <laughs> see the chocolate milk as well because um I I'll talk about it later but yeah here's Jasper and then we say bye to Jasper for a while uh but he stutters like a lot in the game is this is this is all you 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 try 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 it's all the stuttering I mean people stutter but yeah we're gonna go to Wish House. So in this area is Wish House. Uh, there is actually lore into Wish House is that um, Wish House is actually an orphanage that um, helps like kids and fosters kids as well. So yeah, they put in kids, and then one of the uh, antagonists in the game. We will talk about it later on. Uh, one of the antagonists in the game, Walter Sullivan, is actually uh, fostered or held in this house because. Uh, his mom and dad actually uh, kind of like ran away and didn't want to keep him. So um, the wish house actually adopted him um, into the house. 
And also, if you can see, uh, if you saw a little kit just now, that kit is actually Walter Sullivan. But later on, you will see an adult Walter Sullivan. And also context, a little bit more context into the game itself. Um, if you play Silent Hill 2, and also yes, this is in correlation with Silent Hill 2. Um, if you if you look at one of the newspaper articles in Silent Hill 2, it talks about Walter Sullivan. But uh, later on, we will talk about Walter Sullivan. Sullivan. I'm gonna give um, Jasper this um, this chocolate milk, and then I'm gonna stand right here just a bit. You can see him just gulping down for a bit. It's like gulp, gulp, gulp. It's infinite. It's infinite. He will get infinite chocolate milk with that small little bottle of chocolate milk. But yeah, um, right now we got a shovel. Uh, I need to go use the shovel and not get bitten by a dog because the dogs are just... Uh, it hurts. It hurts. Um, enemies in this game is pretty much RNG as well. Alright, I'm gonna use the shovel on this hand right here. And then it should provide me a key. But I'm not gonna use the key to get out. Um, I'm gonna go into the hole. I'm gonna go into the hole and uh, put the key into the chest. So there is a chest that you need to use uh, for the majority of the game. This is the chest. So this chest actually stores a lot of the items in the game. Where if you try to do item inventory, you need to... Uh, store items in the chest and we need to store that key in the chest because if you use that key and go outside it is an actual like infinite um, uh infinite key so like if you with uh if you hold on to the key um when you get out of this door right here it's actually infinite so you get to be uh going out of this room infinitely and then yeah if you do not you bit me again! How dare you! <laughs> uh, <laughs> My god, the dogs are not cooperating with me. If you actually w uh, hold on to the key, it's like infinite. Uh, if you put the keys in, uh, back into the apartment, it's not really that infinite. But you do need to um, take back the key. And conveniently, there's a hole right here. So you can actually go into the hole, go back into the apartment, and um, get the um, key again. This is the first time I've got bitten twice in one in one go, but sure. Oh, also, um, here's a thing as well. Here's a cool little thing. If you can see, like, the, the health bar increasing a bit. Like, you can see the health bar increasing a bit. Um, your, you actually increase your health uh, if you're inside the apartments. So, that's a little quirky thing. Which is a good thing. Alright, we're gonna use the key and uh, go into wash house. We're gonna pick out a bunch of notes and then um, actually look into the door that will be unlocked pretty soon. Like that. And then we can hear Jasper just burning. We have Jasper. Jasper burns and he is 16121. Remember that. What does that mean? Who knows? Alright, we're gonna go back into the hole. We are gonna go into prison. In prison, I think we actually meet one of the guys that's called... Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he's called Richard. Or another name, if I'm not mistaken. He's- he is a guard. Actually, not Richard. <laughs> he is called- I think, yeah, yeah, he's called Richard. There we go, he's called Richard. <laughs> so he is a guard, and, um, he is, um, in this prison. Just held captives held captive in this prison. Basically, um, it's going through, like, I think if I'm not mistaken, it's going through the scenarios or the, 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 the places that um, Walter Sullivan has been, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Richard. Okay, cool. It's the other guy that I do not know. The, the next guy is the guy that I forgot what it was. Alright. So I'm gonna pick up this key and this key is gonna be for this door because this door is actually locked and we can actually go outside now. That's actually pretty cool. Outside! Alright, now I have to go up to the water tower 
where I can activate the water tower. And this water tower actually active uh, when it's activated, it actually like powers up lights and stuff like that. So there's that. I don't know what happened to the timer. I saw the chat. <laughs> I saw the chat talking about the timer. So I'm just gonna go on. I don't know what happened. I'm just gonna go on with it, anyways. But anyways, um, yeah, we're gonna activate this, uh, water tower. And then we're gonna go down towards, uh, this area right here. Uh, my PB right now is a 51.11, but it's in-game time. So, uh, real time. Oh, yes, in-game time and real time as well. So, oh, by the way, we are gonna drop down into holes as well. Cool. Love holes. And then we're gonna see a weird character right here, or a weird enemy. Uh, I'll talk about the enemy, like, pretty soon, but, yeah. Uh, can I climb up? There we go. Yeah, my PB is a 5111 now. Uh, I'm gonna do this neat little skip right here. It's called a pause skip, so I'm gonna do this. Oh, I missed one. Altogether, there are six different, um, pause skips. Like this. So, when I do a pause skip, it actually skips the cutscene. And it's actually better. So, I'm gonna do four more right here. If I can try. So, it cuts like... It skips like this kind of cutscenes. Oh my god. Alright. Alright, we got the other two. Which is good. Three out of six. Um, still alright. Still... Uh, kind of alright. It's kind of a bit like frame perfect as well, so I gotta be very um, precise with that. But yeah, um, it skips the cutscenes and it's actually faster that way because the cutscenes actually take about like three to five seconds if I'm not mistaken. All right. So now, um, so the reason why I had to do like uh, these pause skips and also uh, turn the bows and stuff like that. It's because I need to go into a different room, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I need to go into a different room uh, where these um, prison doors actually move. And it brings you to, like, different areas of the basement, if I'm not mistaken. Alright, if I can actually go down, thank you. And then it brings me to another place in the basement. Alright. Alright, this one is 0302. I don't remember what the code is, but I just remember it by head. It's just 0302 and that's it. And we get to see uh, Richard actually die in that area. Richard actually dies uh, by drowning. And I think he is... If I'm not mistaken, he's... 17 or 18, if I'm not mistaken. I think he's 18 now. It's not 17. I think Jasper was 17. And then Cynthia was 16. Alright. But yeah, uh, it's 18121 now. Yeah, right now we are gonna meet um, Andrew. Andrew is a pretty much um, security guard, if, if I'm not mistaken. There are like a few security guards in this game, so yeah. But the next, the next person that we're gonna save is probably the uh, very, very important person that we're gonna save. Because it is our neighbor, and I'll go talk about the neighbor like pretty soon later on. Um, I'm gonna take this sword right here. This is the sword of obedience. You better be obedient chat If not, I will use the sword onto the chat If you don't behave yourself, all right, if you guys don't behave yourself. I will use the sword of obedience But basically the sword of obedience is um, Is that if you stab one of the uh, floating zo uh, floating zombies floating ghosts See, I got so used to people just calling them floating zombies now that I call them floating zombies. They are floating ghosts but yeah, um, if you use one of the swords um, on the floating um, ghosts, you actually put them into place. And they won't like fly around all the time. But we're going to use the um, Sword of Obedience for one of the um, enemies later on into the game. Um, on the second part of the game, actually. And I'll explain about the second part later on as well. Alright. We're gonna pick up this key and up, oh, turn it in. Thank you. There you go. Now I have to go up. And then we're gonna use this key to unlock a door that is really nearby as well. It's just right beside us. To the, towards the right. 
right here. There you go. We can go all the way down. So basically, this part is just like a maze. You have to go from like one point, uh, one point to another point. Uh, funny enough, um, in the second part of the apartments, there's like uh, other, um, how you say it? There's like, not other, sorry. There's like a second part to like all the places that you have gone to uh, in the second part of the game, which is the escort mission of the game. So in the second part of the apartments, you actually skip like pretty much 90% of the apartments. But over here, we are um, gonna like do the apartments because uh, the apartments is a whole different maze uh, for the first part of the game. All right, we need to avoid the monkeys. There we go. I call them monkeys for some reason. This is big guys. All right, we got a few more of these enemies right here. I'm gonna pass that one. There we go. I think my health is gonna be all right. Yeah, my health is kind of all right. All right, cool. <laughs> I'll talk about the hospital later, but like, um, right now we are just about to end off the um, the apartments, or we ca I, I call it city actually. No, I call it city. The next one is gonna be apartments. Uh, this code is actually the 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 one code that I know. So three seven five zero is the code for this one. So. The way on how you find this code, also, scream! Rip. Rip my dude from above. Um, so, the way on how you find that code is that um, if you go outside of your apartment, you can actually see a billboard that says about the. Uh, oh no! Ow! <laughs> Please! No! A bad RNG. Marathon luck. I call this marathon luck. Um, if you go outside of the apartments, or you look outside of the apartments, there's a billboard that has the um, the code. I mean, the co yeah, the code for the uh, the bar is actually the phone number. So if you look at the last four digits of the phone number, it's called uh, it's three seven five zero. So yeah. <laughs> but yeah, right now we are gonna go all the way up. Um, it's a really really long staircase. But yeah. The next part of the game will like kind of like um group up with like every single information that you get in this game. So uh strap in because I'm gonna throw you all with some information about this game like after this part. So uh Andrew dies by electrocution, so rip. And also, um, the reason why you're getting the, all these placards, I forgot about talking about the placards as well. So these placards are actually used for um, another hole later on. Because you need to make another hole uh, so that you can actually transport yourself into another place. Alright, so we are in the apartments. And this is the same apartments, uh, apartment complex that Henry's actually in. And this one we are actually going to be saving... Uh, our neighbor so you can see there is a kid right there knocking on the door that is our apartment or Henry's apartment and then that door right there 303 it is um, Eileen's apartment or the neighbor's apartment now you can see an, a big man right there just sitting down there um, being sad and all um, that th that guy is actually Walter Sullivan. He is the adult Walter Sullivan. The kid that you saw knocking is actually child Walter Sullivan. Um, basically, in the game, Walter Sullivan is the antagonist of the game. So, basically, um, Walter Sullivan got, like, really evil. And then he tries to do um, a sacrifice that's called the 21 Segments. So, he begins to kill 21 people. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, he got up to 10, if I'm not mistaken, uh, because he killed, uh, two, oh no, how, how dare you, how dare you, Henry, um, I'm not gonna pick up the doll, man, uh, because he killed two, um, children, both of them are actually siblings, uh, they're twin siblings, if I'm not mistaken, um, in the game itself, you actually saw... Um, someone called uh, some monster that's called the twin victims. That's actually from uh, the newspaper article back in like Sanzo 2. There's a lot of lore in this game that uh, I can 
probably go on for hours and hours but the main thing that you need to know is that um, Walter Sullivan um, wanted to do something called the 21 Sacraments trying to murder 21 people uh, it stopped at 10 and then afterwards somehow it just continued on and on and on uh, they have no clue what happened um, and Henry right here is the last person in the 21 Sacraments he um, in the game itself, um, if he actually dies, he is actually the 21st sacrament. Um, and yeah, there are names for the 21 sacraments as well. If I'm not mistaken, um, Eileen is actually called Mother. Where am I going? I'm going to the wrong area. I'm going here. I need to pick up this paper right here. There you go. Alright, cool. So this paper right here, because I picked it up, I need to look at this place and then yeah get a doll key so that's the only paper that you actually need to get um in the game you can actually pick up like a, a buttload of papers i think it's about like five six papers but th that's the only paper that you only need to get uh in the game and that's it but yeah we're gonna use this key just to unlock the store you can hear a scream that's eileen All right, so we got all the uh, placards right here, and I need to pick up this one more placard, which is the succubus talisman. And then, yeah, we're gonna use the succu succubus talisman on the wall itself because, uh, believe it or not, the 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 hole that we ha we have been going through the whole time is actually blocked off. So now uh, we have to make another hole, and actually go into that hole just to um, meet up with Eileen because Eileen actually survived. Um, Eileen survived and she goes into the hospital and this is where the escorting begins this is where I say come on Eileen for like the, the entirety of this segment or like the entirety of this second part but um, right now we are uh, uh, we are gonna go into the heavy RNG part the first heavy RNG part of the game or the second part of the game which is um, <laughs> finding Eileen and you have to find Eileen throughout this these amount of doors. There are 24 doors, I think, if, if I'm not mistaken. Wow, I got a good RNG! Alright, we got the good RNG. We need to pick up this hospital key. And then we need to try to find Eileen right now. So that's a good RNG, so I can actually find Eileen by just uh, going on to these doors and just like... Seeing whether any of the key, uh, any of the doors actually work with this key, and I need to be very careful because th these moving wheelchairs actually would hit you. All right, kind of bad RNG for um for Eileen, but um yeah, you don't have to worry about that one because we got the key very early. Finding the key very early is a really good thing as well. Um, usually if you wanna go fast in this game, it's usually what we call the L1 R1. Basically, if like Eileen and the key are right beside each other, it's actually a really good, um, it's a really good RNG. Also, like I said, the escorting begins because I need to escort Eileen. Hello, Eileen. Is Eileen not coming? Thank you. Eileen actually came now. All right, cool. So yeah, this is the escort mission of the game. So I had to escort Eileen into different places, um, trying not to actually lose her because... Here's the thing, if you do not bring Eileen into certain parts of the game, or certain parts of the area, there is a door that says, oh, you need to, like, uh, escort Eileen into that door, which is really bad. Uh, I'm gonna pick up uh, this envelope right here if I can. One envelope. There we go. Alright, we're gonna pick up this key. This key is actually used for uh, an elevator. Or specifically the back of an end of elevator because uh, the back of an elevator right here. It reveals a secret door right here. And then I need to bring Eileen right here. Alright, these are called the patients. I don't like the patients. They try to hit me. Wow, what a lag. What a lag, dude. What's he playing on? He's playing on Wi-Fi, man. Alright, I need to bring Eileen here. So basically, if you, as you can see, 
I, I should not uh, leave Eileen alone if I try to go into the door. That's why I need to bring Eileen uh, throughout this game. Also, fun fact. Uh, Eileen has another costume. It's a very sexy costume, but I didn't want to use the costume because, hey, uh, origin originality is actually the best one. There's also a, a, another uh, outfit for Cynthia, the, uh, the first woman in the game. But uh, I didn't really unlock that one. I only unlocked the uh, <laughs> the Eileen outfit, so yeah. All right, so we are gonna go into this like spiral staircase, and we are go gonna go into like the first door right here. So basically, right now we are gonna go into different um the the same areas that you have been through um for the first part of the game. So right now we are in back in the subway. We are back in the subway. Yeah, you get to see Eileen a lot more. <laughs> With that outfit. Alright. That is the cue. So I need to listen up to a few sounds. That's one of the sounds where uh, Eileen needs to follow you. Why are you doing this? <laughs> Why are you doing this, Henry? Alright. So I need to go back to the apartments because I need to pick up one more key. I need to pick up this key right here. Alright. If I could actually do that, there you go. Alright, this key is gonna be useful later, but right now we are actually gonna meet someone really special. If you guys do know about Cynthia, Cynthia's back! But in a ghost form. Ooh, spooky. All right, I need to listen up to this sound cue. The sound cue is going to be really important. If not, I'm just going to skip it. Okay, no, I'm just going to skip it. All right. Um, Basically, if there's a sound cue right there, it actually means that Cynthia is gone in that room. So basically... The idea of this area, or the idea of like, because you have to leave um, Eileen into that area. So basically, if Cynthia is still with Eileen, Cynthia can attack Eileen and Eileen can be damaged a lot. But if there is a sound cue, um, Cynthia will actually leave Eileen and uh, Eileen will be actually like, kind of like unscathed. But at the same time, um... She could go into some kind of weird kind of damage sooner or later in the game. But I'm not too sure about it yet. We'll see. Alright, so I picked up a coin uh, from a chest. And I'm gonna go back into the hole. Because um, I need to wash the coin. And also I need to do a, a little bit of item inventory right now. Item management right here. So I'm gonna put everything except for the pistol and the coin back into the chest. There you go. All right, now we're gonna wash this coin. So basically, why I do that is because, uh, like I said, it's item management, and also at the in the forest, you actually use all of the um, slots in the inventory. So I had to put everything except the coin and the pistol all the way uh, all um, into the chest. But yeah, now we are we are actually gonna go back into um, the escalators again. The RNG escalators. I call it another name. I don't want to say the other name, but I call it another name. <laughs> but yeah, it's just torturous. But um, this part, we are uh, we are gonna use the gun. So the reason why we are gonna use the gun is because uh, we're gonna shoot the uh, the monsters that's coming out from the wall. But not only that, we also need to waste all the bullets. So there's 12 bullets um, in the gun. I'm gonna use four on this one, hopefully. There we go. And altogether, there are like four um, monsters that's coming out from the wall. Oh, this one needs five hits. Kind of sucks, but sure. <laughs> I'm gonna get hit. All right, there we go. We're gonna waste all the bullets. So, wasting all the bullets is actually um, something in the speed run because you need to pick up uh, another bullet, which is a silver bullet, which is like later on in the game, but not now. I'm gonna pick up this card because it's a commuter card. It's Cynthia's commuter card. Uh -huh. 
And I think... Is she alright? Oh no, she might not be alright. Oh, Eileen might be... Not... Okay, Eileen might not be alright, but we'll see. See, this is the whole, like... Um... Downside of this area, because uh, if Eileen gets hurt... Like, really, really hurt, um... The speedrun could go haywire very easily. And I'll explain why if she actually does it. I do not know if I saw her limping. Because if she's limping, that's actually a sign of her getting hurt. Um, hopefully she didn't limp at all. I want to hope that she doesn't limp. Alright, now we're gonna escort uh, Eileen all the way to um, a subway train. And the reason why I'm picking up this um, this handle right here is because I need this handle for a um, to start the subway train. Hopefully this monster doesn't really hurt me. Never mind, it hurts me. Wow. I'm gonna be really safe because this is a marathon. I'm gonna use uh, safety strats. There is a health bottle right beside um, the escalator. Uh, when I get down. But yeah. Now we are gonna go all the way down. We're gonna leave Eileen for a bit. Because Eileen is just... Nah. Alright. Wow! You're gonna hit me again! Wow! Thank you. Alright. We are gonna get this health drink right here. It's called a nutritional drink. But I just call it a health drink anyways. Alright. Now we're gonna escort Eileen into this uh, subway train. So the escorting on this area is not really that, um, how you say, not really that serious. But the next few parts is gonna be really serious. Alright, Cynthia is gonna be really fine. Alright, we're gonna say goodbye to Cynthia. Goodbye, Cynthia. And then... There you go. Alright. Bye, Cynthia. Alright. Okay, she's still alright. If I'm not mistaken, that's still alright. Okay, there are a few things that I want to look out on Cynthia at the moment. Uh, Cynthia. On Eileen at the moment. Um, one is that if she's all red, uh, that could be a really bad sign of her being hurt. Um, two is that if she starts talking into some gibberish or some mom, dad stuff, um, it's also a bad sign that she's actually hurt. So you don't want these two to actually uh, occur in the speed run. So I had to have um, Eileen in what you call pristine, <laughs> pristine condition because she's a babe and you want <laughs> your models to be in pristine condition, am I right? All right, we are now in the forest and in the forest, we actually meet uh, Walter Sullivan. Gonna, gonna light up this torch right here. Uh, this part of the forest, you actually have to pick up uh, a few um, items or five key items, which are doll items or doll parts in the game. So we uh, uh, we picked up a doll head, and also I'm gonna try to escort her if she comes. And the dog had to, had to hit me again. This is the third time. I have never gotten that many bites in a single run before. This is the first time I've I've ever gotten three. Which is unfortunate, but sure. But yeah, uh, right now all of these times I'm gonna escort her into uh, the middle of the wish house. Basically, the wish house right now is actually burned down because, uh, as you probably remember, in the earlier part of the game, Jasper actually burnt himself, and um, it um, it goes on to burn the whole wish house down. So yeah, there's that. And also, hello, Walter Sullivan. Please do not shoot me. I swear to God, if you shoot me, <laughs> thank you. Walter is actually pretty nice right now. Alright. So I'm gonna pick up the silver bullet. This is the really crucial thing that I'm actually gonna pick up. Because the silver bullet is gonna be used in the next uh, area. Alright, I'm gonna uh, pick up... Uh, I'm gonna get this gun. Equip the gun. I'm gonna go to the bullet. Equip the bullet. And then go through the door like that. And then the last one is to equip the um, torch again. <laughs> There's a guy whose name's Jasper in the chat. 
Hello, Mr. Jasper. <laughs> but yeah, basically in the game, there is a character called Jasper, and he is um, a, a dude who really likes chocolate milk. And um, he stutters a lot as well. And he gets burned alive. But yeah. There you go. Also, that is the twin victims. So basically the twin victims in the game um, correlates with the newspaper article back in Silent Hill 2, if you play the game. Many people do not know about this. They think that, oh, Silent Hill 1, 2, 3, 4 is kind of like um, chronological, but it's not. Silent Hill, Silent Hill 1 is actually um, correlating with Silent Hill 3, and then Silent Hill 2 correlates with Silent Hill 4, which is kind of weird. The the odd numbers correlate each other, the even numbers correlate each other. I don't know. That's how, that's how it is. But yeah, with the story, uh, I think... Sound Hole 2 started, uh, started first and then Sound Hole 4 if I'm not mistaken. Chocolate milk is good. It's really good. But you're not the Jasper who gets the infinite chocolate milk. Alright? The Jasper in this game gets infinite chocolate milk. <laughs> Poor Jasper in the chat. Alright. So there are two um, um, parts that I need to pick up over here. If I can actually go through them. Right. So I think in this area you don't really have to go into the hole at all, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, in this area you don't you don't really need to go into the hole because the item uh the item management in this game um is actually um good. Cause you need to fill up all of your slots in the uh in the inventory. And you do not have to go into the hole just to like um replace your uh, items and stuff like that, which is really good for the speed run. Alright, gonna light up the torch again. There is gonna be another well that's gonna be outside right here. Uh, there's a well right here. There we go. And then the last well is gonna be really, really far ahead. Um, we're gonna see twin victims one more time right there. I love twin victims. Twin victims is like one of my favorite monsters in Silent Hill. You may be thinking, oh, Pyramid Head, wow, it's so pre pre prevalent, prevalent. You have, like, the, the, the nurses as well, but no. My favorite monster, or one of my favorite monsters in Silent Hill is these two-headed monster. <laughs> these two-headed monsters. It's called the Twin Victims. I love, I love the lore of the Twin Victims as well. It's a really good lore. All right, we're going to pick up this pickaxe. This pickaxe is going to be used at the final part of the game. But I need it, like, uh, on me so that I could actually have it. And I'm gonna pick up this medallion right here. I can actually pick up the medallion. Thank you. Alright. Alright. This is the final part as well. That I need to go to. Which is right at this well. Alright. So, all these... Doll parts right here, you have to assemble them onto a, if I'm not mistaken, a wheelchair part right here. I go right here. There is a wheelchair right here, and I have to assemble everything on here. And then it reveals like a secret area right here, like a basement. So we're gonna go into the basement, and then we are just gonna get out of here as well. I can get Eileen right here. Thank you, Eileen. Much appreciated, Eileen. All right. So now we are gonna go into the prison. This is the second heavy RNG part. If I I could call that RNG, but it's really consistent once um y you play the game like again and again and again, or if you speed run the game, there is a consistent strat that you actually can do with this RNG part of the game. But uh, hopefully I can get it. I do not really want to waste all my bullets in this game. Because if I waste my bullets, it's going to be really, really bad. Um, because I need the bullets for the next part of the game after prison. And yes, we are going to go into the prison right here. Alright. Hopefully she comes. I don't know if she came. Alright, she came. Alright, cool. There's a lot of innuendos, I'm sorry. Because I need her to come, and she came, and she always needs to come, and stuff like that. It's a lot of innuendos. <laughs> but, uh, 
Yeah, this is the game that basically you just have to shout come on Eileen for like the eternity of the second part of the game because you need Eileen to actually follow you. If not, um, bad things start to happen. There, uh, there are two endings that I'm probably gonna either go for. One is the mother ending where we actually save Eileen. Or two, uh, which is the sec 21 segments ending, uh, which Eileen actually dies. But if uh, the, the the whole thing is that uh, if um, Eileen is kind of not hurt, she could survive a little bit longer. But like if she's really really hurt, she is gonna survive very uh, very less or very little uh, for the how you say. For the final boss of the game. So I'm gonna wait until um, Eileen actually comes down. I'm also gonna watch out for my health as well. Eileen's gonna come. Please, Eileen, come. Thank you. Alright, so I'm gonna stun her for a bit. I'm gonna stun her right here like this. I'm gonna push her into there and then stun her like that. Alright, cool. So the reason that I'm gonna stun her is that I want her to be in that room. I don't want- I do not want her to go out of the room. She needs to stay there until like I'm done with um, getting one more item. Yeah, the, the mosquitoes in this game is the worst. It's also really like RNG heavy into like the game itself. Alright. A lot of button mashing as well because you do need a button mash in this game. <laughs> I forgot about talking about the button mashing as well. It's really wacky with its um, key bindings as well. Just saying that. Alright, I need to pick up this shirt right here. This shirt is going to be very important for the next part of the game. Because uh, we're going to spawn in um, Richard. I can actually do this, thank you. There you go. Hello, Eileen. Bye, Eileen. Oh, basically, by the way, she can't really go into the hole because she cause she can't really see the hole at all. Only, only, um, who's the guy? Only Henry can actually look into the hole, and that's it. He tried it once with Eileen trying to, like, drag her into the hole, but it didn't work out that well. So, yeah. Alright, I'm gonna pick up a few items right here because I need the items. I'm gonna pick up bullets and also the knife. Or, uh, the Sword of Obedience. So, the Sword of Obedience right now is gonna be used for, um, Richard. Because Richard right now, because we spawned Richard right here. So, we spawned Richard and right now, he's floating, like, somewhere. He's also, like, shirtless at the, as well. So... We're gonna use the silver bullet to actually shoot him and then use the sword of obedience to actually put him in place thus getting a key from him hello there you go he's shirtless give me a key there you go stab him he's into place there you go all right so now we're gonna escort uh eileen all the way down to uh, the basement And also protecting my queen. I'm gonna protect my queen. Eileen is definitely my queen. <laughs> I'm sorry. I should have said queen for this. Alright, we're gonna wait for Eileen because Eileen needs to come here. Come on, Eileen. I think she's close enough. Yeah. Alright, cool. Alright. Now, this is the actual RNG part of the game. Which I did say is consistent if you actually do this properly, but like, we'll see how consistent it is. I might use my bullets, we'll see. So not only do you get one uh, twin victims, you get eight twin victims. And they are protecting the door. Uh, normally you would shoot them down, but uh, in this case I'm gonna go right here, I'm gonna do this. Go into them for a bit, and then hopefully, Eileen, please come here. Eileen, please. Eileen, please. Eileen, please. Eileen's. Eileen is screwed. Eileen is screwed. 
Oh no! The marathon luck! Alright, Eileen, please come. No, Eileen, you better not. <laughs> well, she's limping. Alright, that's a really bad thing. Alright, so this is the problem right now with her limping like that. So basically, with her limping, it's gonna slow down the speedrun a lot. Tremendously. Yep. So this is one of the reasons, like, why, like, I really hate that part of the game. Because if you actually, um, get Eileen to be stuck in there, um, there's, there's a few places that you could actually get her out. One is by shooting, or the other one is just by not wasting your bullets and just actually, like, hitting the, uh, or killing the, uh, twin victims. But right now, I don't know how Eileen is gonna be like right now. Please, Eileen. I just really want her to not talk. That that's it. All right, please, Eileen, come. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so now we are in city, and city we get to meet Andrew. Hello, Andrew. Bye, Andrew. All right, we're gonna escort her into this el escal elevator. Sorry, I keep messing up escalator and elevator. All right, so I'm gonna pick up this um this bullet as well, and now I'm gonna bonk her again. There we go. I bonked her. So I need I need her to be stunned right there because right now we are gonna go all the way towards the other side. Uh, I'm gonna pick up these. I forgot about these. All right, there we go. Gonna heal up as well, which is good. And then, this is the part where I say that you actually skip 90%, literally 90% of apartments. So, what you gotta do in apartments is that it's a big whole maze where you have to g gather one item, um, and then put in, an, uh, put in into a specific place, and then do the same thing again and again and again for like, five times. But... As you can see, uh, as you can hear, Eileen actually comes by with you. So the whole pl uh, the whole skip for this one is that Eileen is on the other side of a metal gate. And then all of a sudden, she can actually teleport around the metal gate. And she could actually, like, be with you. And also, please, Eileen, do not... Oh, no. Eileen's gonna get really bad and really hurt. But yeah, we're gonna do the same concept again. Hopefully, because she's limping. I'm gonna hope that she actually goes through. So, as you can see, there's a metal gate right there. A metal, like, thing. There we go. Did she come over? No, she didn't come over. Ah, uh, she's limping. Okay, that's actually really bad. Yep. Yep, that's actually really bad. Uh. Alright. Hopefully, she's there. Alright, cool. This is 4890. So if she's limping, right? She she can't really go around the um, the metal gate. And she has to like just wait there. Or like she has to just come towards you. You have to wait there. She has to come towards you, which kind of sucks. Give her nutrition. <laughs> okay. So, the way on how you actually heal Eileen is that there are holy candles around the game. So, you use the holy candles and actually put a holy candle on her. You can actually heal her. Um, you put a holy candle around her and she could actually heal up um, by, uh, from time to time. The, 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 the holy candle is also used for the room as well because the room is going to be really, really haunted. Um, but yeah... We are gonna go down to what I call the heaviest RNG factor in the game, which is the one truth. And I'm gonna hope that I can actually do one truth because if if I can't do one truth, it's gonna be really really bad. All right, please, Eileen, Eileen, come on, Eileen, please. I know your leg hurts, but please. Okay. I need her to actually come here right now, please. Oh my gosh, she's actually taking a really, really long time to actually come down here. D d that's really long. That's actually pretty long. There you go. Alright, one truth. Alright, there are 12 one truth. Uh, 
There are 12 troops. You need to find the, the, the one and only truth where it will take all the damage. Not this one. Not this one. And Eileen is actually down right now. <laughs> Alright. This is going to be really bad. Uh, for this run, no. I do not grab the hatchet. The routing has changed a lot for the past. Also, damn. I'm, I'm just going to do the, the usual way. Whatever. I'm just going to do the usual way of doing this. Uh, doing this. Which is to shoot every single one of them. If I could actually find which one is which. So at this point, it's like... Um, at this point, the run is already dead. But like... <laughs> basically, right now, I'm just trying to find which one is the correct one. So if you try to shoot all of these... Um, they will get hurt. But um, at the same time... Hello, Eileen. Can you please get out of the way? They didn't... She didn't get out of the way. Whatever. I'm just gonna try to... Shoot a few more if I can. All right, this is not going to go well. This is actually not going to go well. Not this one. Not this one. Ah. Yeah, this this thing ain't going to go well. Getting back up a bit. All right, it's one of these two. This is one of these two. All right. So we got the one truth part. There we go. The one truth part is done. So like I said, it's the pretty heaviest RNG in um, the game because if you can't find the the one truth quickly enough, um, uh, bad things will happen. And also, as you can see, Eileen is not in pristine condition right now because Eileen is all bloodied up. But... We could try to save Eileen, hopefully, <laughs> at the end of the game. We're not, I'm not sure. I'm probably going to get the 21 Sacraments ending, but um, at, to be fair though, like the ending of the game doesn't really matter. The only thing that matters in this game is the IGT or the in-game timer, because this game actually goes by in-game timer. And also, like I said, I do not know what's my time at the moment, but uh, I'm going to hope that it's below 110, because I actually... Um, cut my estimate to um, I cut my estimate from 115 to 110 if I'm not mistaken but yeah right now we are gonna escort Eileen all the way down towards the, uh, our apartments now because um, this is the final part of the game at least finally is the final part of the game anyways don't, go too fast. Uh, don't talk a lot Eileen <laughs> 5545 still in good time still in good time all right a lot of button mashing right here as you get as you guys as you guys can hear we're gonna do a little bit more asmr right here so get ready i'm not gonna talk all right there we go so we need to pick up all these papers so that uh, we could actually activate a little cutscene right here. And we skip the cutscene and we get this uh, pickaxe. There's another pickaxe on the wall. Uh, we're gonna take another pickaxe. We're gonna use the pickaxe immediately because uh, when we go into our room or our apartment and we use the pickaxe right here, there is a secret area. Ooh, secret area right here. So what the secret area is, is actually Walter Sullivan, right there. So Walter hid himself from uh, behind the, the apartment room. And he's finishing, he's trying to finish his 21 sacraments uh, murder frenzy. So yeah. So now we have to defeat him. Also, right now, uh, we get to leave Eileen. So goodbye, Eileen. We don't get to see you again. Bye. Alright, so we're gonna leave Eileen there until, like, uh, later. Because we need to bring Eileen to one more part in the game. Uh, but right now, we are just gonna go all the way back down to the, um, to the superintendent room. There's also a little bit of lore for the superintendent room as well. So, basically, the superintendent in this game, 
uh, actually kept something that is from Walter Sullivan. And that thing, believe it or not, is an umbilical cord. It's an actual umbilical cord that the Super Nintendo was like, Hey, you know what? I'm gonna keep this umbilical cord just to be, just to be safe. And then he didn't know that that, that that umbilical cord is actually an evil umbilical cord because, you know, sure. Look at look at the apartments right now. It's all evil. The apartment complex is really evil right now. Also, you can see the Super Nintendo room is actually chained up. Right now, we are gonna try to unlock it by hitting uh, six different Walter Sullivan. That looks like this. All right, so the voice that is talking at the moment is actually Walter Sullivan's his dad. Uh, Walter Sullivan, uh, the dad is actually talking to what the? Okay, cool. Well, uh, the dad is actually talking to the mom because the mom like gave birth to Walter Sullivan, and then the dad's like, that dad's like, uh, we have to get out of here right now. We don't, we do not want the kid. Um, so basically. Kid Walter Sullivan, if you can hear, uh, if you heard like him just shouting out, Dad, where's Dad? Dad. Basically, Dad Walter Sullivan right there, the kid Walter Sullivan, thinks that the apartment room is actually his parents or his mom and dad. So he gets to knock on the door thinking that the, the apartment room could actually open up because uh, he thinks that, oh, the mother is the apartment room itself. Like legitimately the whole apartment room. Alright, we get to see Eileen, and we had to escort Eileen the final time to the Super Nintendo room. If I could actually go into there. Then we're gonna get the umbilical cord right here. The umbilical cord, the evil umbilical cord. So we're gonna get this, we're gonna take it, and we're gonna bring it all the way towards Walter Sullivan. Because Walter Sullivan is very evil. He's not a good guy. We need to use the uh, umbilical cord and um, get him. So right now is the is a mad dash towards the final part of the game. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go and do a few shoutouts right away. Shoutouts to the Silent Hill community because the Silent Hill community is um, a really fantastic community. If you want to pick up this game or uh, any one of the eight main Silent Hill games, you could check out um, the Silent Hill Discord. The community is really really nice, and uh, we have been finding a lot of stuff uh, for like games that are 20 years old as well so yep and then a big huge shout out to big john as well for uh, allowing me to actually run my game on his event and also uh, congrats on also paying your bills uh right before uh i started my run as well it's a really touching moment i really do appreciate um the support as well I mean, he, uh, he needs the support. Oh my! What am I talking about? <laughs> I'm dumb. All right, we get to fight. We, we get to fight um, Walter Sullivan. Uh, just, just saying, I'm dumb. That's it. He needs all the support he needs. There you go. That's what I ne wanted to say. All right, we're gonna fight off Walter Sullivan. But um, here's the thing. This is not Walter Sullivan. That is Walter Sullivan. That monster right there is Walter Sullivan. All right. So now we're gonna get all these fear uh, spears. All right. These spears right here is called the spear of the Holy Mother. We need to get eight of these these spears and uh, step into Walter Sullivan because Walter Sullivan uh, is pretty pretty evil. And hopefully I can actually do this fight because this fight is gonna be really really crucial. I do not have any heals. I could have gotten like, uh, I could have gotten like a, a safety heal, but like, oops. Alright, we're gonna stab the spears. Four more spears, and then we are gonna be done as well. Uh, not done yet, actually. So, hopefully you don't hit me, thank you. There you go. Alright, I need Walter to be like right here, please. 
All right, thank you, Walter. All right. So now, after stepping all these um, spears, I need to equip my pickaxe because we're gonna mine the crap out of uh, <laughs> we're gonna mine the crap out of Walter Sullivan right here. And also, I, I should mention about this, there's a meter bar. Wow! Are you kidding me? <laughs> what kind of lag is that? That was a really bad lag. Hello, hello, do not, do not do that to me, please. Thank you very much. All right, so I need to use the pickaxe to actually mine him. Uh, if, as you can see on the, on the top left, there is a meter bar. So I need to like fill up the meter bar so I can actually hit him. So I need to hit him like five times right here. I need to hit him like two, one. Please let me save Eileen. Please let me save Eileen. And then one more swing and then we are good. Is Eileen saved? Is Eileen saved? Eileen, please do not go. Oh, by the way, time. <laughs> time, by the way. <laughs> there you go. That's Silent Hill for the room. And I think we actually save Eileen. <laughs> we saved Eileen. So, like I said, there are two endings that you can get. Uh, if Eileen survives... She's dead? I don't think she's dead. I really don't think she's dead. We get to see. We get to see. Hold on. She might be dead. I do not know if she's dead. <laughs> the anticipation of this game. But yeah, there's two endings for this game. Like, um, if you try to uh, do um, the Eileen thing. Eileen is still there! Eileen is still safe! <laughs> Eileen is there! So basically, you can get either two endings for um, the speedrun. One is the mother ending, the other one is the 21 Sacraments ending. Basically, if you kill Eileen, it's 21 Sacraments. Um, if you save Eileen, it's mother ending. Yeah, we, we get to save Eileen. And now, the room has been opened. The apartment has been opened. <laughs> Come on, Eileen. Yeah, we get to save Eileen. Um, so the other two endings is that if you actually um put holy candles in the apartment and actually try to uh heal the apartment up, um, you try you try to heal the apartment up. Uh, you could get like another two endings as as well, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, right now, hey Henry's out of the apartments, which is actually really that good as well. I'm gonna skip this right now, cause I'm probably stalling the whole the whole speed run, the speed run marathon right here. Hey, we got mother, and also 54:22. Not a bad time. Uh, I had a really bad uh one truth, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I had a really bad one truth. Um, really bad twin victims room. But yeah, um, it goes by in-game time. My my PV is a uh, 51:11, so I could actually actually like be better with this game but like eh. it's a marathon anyways but yeah um thank you guys for watching uh if you want to check me out do check me out on twitch.tv slash slash jewhorse that's j-u-h-z-o-r-s-e uh big big shout outs to big john for uh picking up my game and letting me run on his marathon and also once again big 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 congrats to him for for reaching his goal not only reaching his goal, also paying the bills as well. But yeah, um, that's it for me. Um, right, the next one I think is Benji, if I'm not mistaken. Benji with Majora's Mask. So yeah, 